Now we're going to take a look at a specific type 3 hypersensitivity disorder, an autoimmune disease, disease called lupus. Now why are we looking at that in particular and not looking at any other kind of autoimmune disease? First of all, it's pretty common and second of all, it's just a good prototype in order to look at the use and the implications of corticosteroid use. So that's really kind of the underlying reason why we're even going to talk about something so kind of obscure in the big scheme of things because these patients are not going to be, you know, admitted into acute care because of, you know, arthritic pain. They live with chronic pain, chronic fatigue, but they will have diseases that um, will involve the organs that are affected by the lupus. But corticosteroid use is such an important topic for us because they're so um, pervasive in patient care and have so many implications for nursing. Okay, so this type three hypersensitivity disorder, uh, lupus in particular, well, what occurs that prompts this to take place? Is it, are we all at risk? Well, not necessarily. You need to have a genetic predisposition for it, and then usually a, uh, some type of preceding event can be identified, something that kind of um, blasts the immune system, whether it be a, a viral illness way back, or even some sort of um, drug or medicine can trigger the immune system to recognize itself as foreign. So that's what an autoimmune disease is, that the system is saying, oh, you must be a foreign invader. So what occurs? Well, these antigens in the blood are released and they release these cytokines. And if you remember from immunity, cytokines are really just these chemical messengers that occur. And I think of it as like a domino effect that when one is secreted or released, then it you know activates another one to do so. And this whole big, um, it's kind of like an orchestra is taking place in order to, to prompt this immune response in the system, beginning in the intravascular space. So when that occurs, something called an immune complex forms. And as we talked about in the earlier show, an immune complex is just an antigen and an antibody that comes together and creates this big ball of garbage. So this big ball of garbage now is, you know, making its way through our intravascular space and triggering an inflammatory process, triggering those inflammatory chemicals to change capillary permeability, to damage basically the lining of the vessel. And as it travels along, eventually it's going to get to the organ systems. So let's take a look at this poor patient who has lupus. She's not very happy about it. And she even has these oral pharyngeal ulcers in her mouth. So everywhere that's red, it kind of represents where you'll see that presentation. Some of it's gonna be subclinical. You're not gonna be able to see all the places that those immune complexes are damaging. So ulcers in the mouth, because the mucosa is a real delicate uh, skin surface. So it's, it's, a, it's a likely victim. Also, you'll see, you know, the skin as the biggest excretory organ, you're going to see all kinds of rashes occur and one that's really idiosyncratic or kind of a, a cardinal sign for lupus is this butterfly rash that appears over the, the nose called the uh, discoid or butterfly rash. Also, you know, you can see all kinds of skin eruptions and rashes and urticarias appear. Every patient is going to present a little bit differently. You're not going to have one cookie cutter prototype of lupus. It just depends on how their system reacts to these immune complexes. And then the heart is going to be, you know, another target organ because the heart doesn't bypass anything that is in the system. And you could have anything from cardiomyopathy to um, inflammation of the sac, endocarditis, all kinds of cardio difficulties. And the lungs could be affected, so that's a major organ system, obviously. Could either be insidious, just, you know, pleural effusions, or eventually could, you know, contribute to lung disease.
the kidney, the renal system is also another system that is uh, unlikely to be bypassed because it is the filter for the whole system. So over time, those patients do suffer from stages of renal failure and disease. As far as diagnostics go, well, because those immune complexes really don't belong there, you're going to have all kinds of hematologic dysgrasia. So platelet level can be diminished, then also the white blood cell and the red blood cell. So the patient can have pancytopenia upon evaluation of their labs. So of course you then look for that secondary bleeding because their platelets are diminished, anemias, so they'll be even more chronically fatigued than they were before. Also, as far as labs go, you're going to see something called the anti-nuclear antibody elevated, so a positive ANA, something that's real specific, the erythro sedimentation rate, so how fast that those red blood cells settle, and the ESR, the erythro sedimentation rate, is going to be elevated when there's any type of inflammatory response in the system. So that's also kind of a positive indicator that supports that differential diagnosis. There's not one sign or symptom that will you know, definitively diagnose lupus. So we need to look at um, all the different aspects of their assessment. Then something called uh, complement that we talked about a little bit. Complement is what is released when you've got the immune system prompted. So those humeral cells then trigger complement to be released. C4 complement, so C1, C2, C3, C4, so complement goes, you know, is numbered in terms of which chemical that you're referring to, and C3 and C4 specifically are the ones that are elevated. Now, is that particularly important? Maybe not, because you don't have the responsibility of diagnosing them, but it's certainly good to understand what's going on with them in that, you know, that subclinical level. Okay, treatment, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So non-steroidal, so they're not steroids. So, you know, you have to understand that class of medications very well from a patient education standpoint and also from the provider standpoint, so you can ask the patient about drugs that they're you know, normally taking their over-the-counter drugs. You want to make sure they understand that with those NSAIDs come the risk of GI upset, gastritis, you know, peptic ulcer disease if their gut is not protected. And do they get relief from it? We want to ascertain you know, what they're familiar with. Tylenol is not an NSAID, but it will certainly help with pain, maybe, because it does have the um, properties that will decrease pain. Plaquenil is actually a drug that's used for malaria, but it does have anti-inflammatory properties, so that's kind of one of the mainstays for the inflammatory cascade associated with lupus. Corticosteroid use is unfortunately, or fortunately, a mainstay of treatment and you'll always hear me go back and forth when I refer to steroids because steroid use is always controversial. Why? Because it is laced with so much implications for care both from our standpoint as somebody assessing and from the advocacy standpoint where you have to educate your patient about that steroid use. Okay, so immunosuppressants, that is indeed a big gun and sometimes necessary like cytotoxin, you know, patients that have had organ transplants, that's going to be a mainstay of treatment. So it's obviously an aggressive approach that may be necessary. Something called plasmapheresis you may be familiar with, um, other types of um, disorders where the patient's immune system is, you know, an aspect of the disease and the plasmapheresis is kind of like a filter for the plasma removing all those antibodies, those immune complexes that are creating this systemic problem. One last mention with the lupus patient is that there are some, they suffer from something called photosensitivity. Well, what does that mean? That they're sensitive to sunlight. So we want to put a big X on this sunshine here. So no Bahama vacations, certainly during an exacerbation of their disease, because it will make the incidence of their rashes and their symptoms even worse.